everyone. Uh, welcome to another family project that we're doing here for you uh, virtually for Studio 23. I'm Autumn, the education coordinator here. Uh, today we're going to be working on a project that um, is a type of uh, traditional Mexican folk art. It's called uh, Amate Bark Paintings. And here is the example of what we're going to be making. So, um, a little background on Amate Bark Paintings is um, the Otomi Indians in San Pablito, Mexico, uh, use the bark of the Honote tree, which is basically just a type of ficus tree. Um, they use that to make uh, papel amate, which is um, just a type of paper that they make out of the tree bark. Uh, the tree grows in mountainous areas in Mexico, and the bark is really thin and tan colored, so it's ideal to make paper out of. Uh, they strip the bark, they boil it in water, they pound it down with a stone to soften it, and then the bark is smoothed out in trays, dried in the suns, and once it's all dried out, then um, artisans paint the paper with traditional images and scenes that you would find in a lot of Mexican folk art, which um, includes a lot of everyday life, like weddings, harvest, religious customs, uh, wildlife, um, and a lot of exotic birds, things like that. So this is, this is what we're gonna work on. Um, if you don't have any kind of tan craft paper, you could absolutely use a brown paper bag from the store that would work just as well. Um, you could color this in with paint, you could color it in with crayons, or you could color it in with, um, I'm going to use oil pastels today. And um, like I've said in the past, you can find oil pastels pretty much anywhere. They're very inexpensive. You don't need anything fancy and um, they work very well. All right, so let's get started. So um, to start, we're going to do an exotic bird because that was a, um, something that you see a lot in a mate bark painting. So we're going to start with the bird itself, okay? We're going to start, we're going to create an outline in one color and then I'll show you how we're going to fill it in. Okay, so we're going to start with the head. So first of all, we want our paper portrait, not landscape, we want it portrait, okay? And we're going to start with the head. So I'm going to start with blue because I our, um, our bird is going to be blue and Right around this area right here, we're gonna start, and we're just gonna do a, a little small half circle. Just like that. And that's gonna be the top of our head. And I started that right around the top, like one third area, if that helps you out at all. All right, then from there, we're gonna draw kind of like maybe, let's see, if you kind of think of it as sort of a C shape, but it's gonna be big, because this is gonna be the body of our bird. All right, there's the head, and there's our body. All right, now we wanna move on to the feathers, okay? So for the feathers, we wanna, we wanna make sure that they go up higher than the head, and we just wanna kinda of make these smooth sort of wavy lines that kind of turn into the, a V shape. So I'll show you exactly what I mean. I'm gonna start at the head and I'm gonna go just a little bit in and I'm gonna do this sort of wavy V shape, just like that to start my wings, okay? And then from there, I'm just gonna keep repeating that shape but I'm gonna keep making it smaller, okay? Let's see, before we do that, I think we're gonna do the main line of the other wing though. I think we'll do that next. The main line of the other wing. So that would be this line right here. Get a little closer. That line right there we're gonna do. So we're gonna, we're gonna go right to where that other wing started and we're gonna do another wavy line going out. I'll show you exactly what I mean. We're gonna round it down and back up. Just like that, okay? All right, so we're gonna keep repeat that pattern that we have up top. All 
but we want it to be smaller. We want it to keep getting smaller. And if it rounds off a little bit on the edges, that's okay too, don't worry about that. And we're gonna keep it going until we reach that other wing. All right, just like that. Now we're gonna do the same thing over here on this wing. We're just repeating that line until we get down to where the body starts because then we can just continue that up to finish off the wings just like this. So we have a head, we have a body, we have two wings, right? Okay, so now from there, we're going to draw um, the, the feathers that are down here at the bottom. And those are just going to be some sort of V shapes that come out from the body and they come down. Um, and then this is kind of a J shape right here. So we'll start with the J shape and we'll make these little V shapes. So we'll do, and we'll make this one nice and big. Let's see. There's our J shape. Now we want those little V shapes coming out. All right, we got our feathers down at the bottom. Um, now maybe we should do our, our beak. So we wanna go back up to the head and we're just gonna do a curved line that's going to be the top of the beak okay and then we're going to do a curved line going the opposite direction and that'll be the bottom of the beak and then we're going to just do another line right in the middle to separate the two just like that and then we're going to give it an eye right in the kind of right in the middle there our, now our bird has an eye, okay? Um, let's see. So I think we got our bird all drawn out. I think from there we will, um, we'll color it in and then we'll move on to the outside decoration. So I'm gonna use probably this blue. I'm gonna, I wanna use some nice bright colors. So I might use this, um, let's see, I'll use some this bright yellow color for part of it and um, I think I'll use some pink too and purple. Okay so for the body itself I'm going to start coloring that in okay with the blue. Now if you are using oil pastels and you want to start blending the color in feel free to do that. Um, you can even blend if you're using paint. The only time you probably can't blend is if you are using um, crayons. Otherwise, if you want to start blending, feel free. Uh, you don't have to. It's not something you have to do. All right. All right. I think I'm going to do a little line of blue on this J shape. Okay. And I think, I think so far so good with that color. I think I'm going to move on to some yellow. Okay. So we're, I'm going to start coloring these wings in yellow. Okay. And then I think when I get out towards the actual feather part of the wings, the tips, I'll change up the color a little bit. Blend this in a little. All right, so now I think I'm going to start mixing some other colors into it, like pink. So some of these tips of these feathers are going to be pink. Not blended 
in. All right, and I think we'll even do a little purple. That'll be nice. Now I'm just gonna color in, basically I'm gonna color in the rest of the um, tips of the feathers. I just wanna mix it up just so it's nice and colorful because that was one of the, um, that's kind of one of the key points of the Amate Bark painting is that um, it's very colorful. And, and uh, a lot of traditional Mexican folk art is very, very colorful. So that's just, we wanna make sure we're encompassing that when we do it. Okay, so I got some, I got some bright colors blended in. Oh, I can't forget my tail feathers. So let me do that really quickly. Let's see, I'll color that in yellow. Color in a little pink really quickly. And a little purple. Blend it in. All right, good to go. All right, so I think we also need to color in the beak and then he needs a comb on top. He needs a little bit of, a little bit more feathers on top. So we'll color in the beak purple. Okay, and then we're gonna draw just a little curved line up here just to create a comb shape. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. Just like that, and then you're gonna color it in, okay? I think I'm gonna color mine in with pink just so I can include more bright colors. I really want to make this nice and bright. All right, and then I think I'm gonna color in the eye with a little bit of purple, just so it's a different color. Okay, so I think we're on the right track for right now. Um, let's see. Then I think we'll move on to some of the decorative parts that we see on our original. So if you see, there's these kind of like floral lines, almost feather-like, not entirely sure what they're supposed to be, um, but we have those with brown coming out from around the bird we're gonna start doing some of those, okay? So you're gonna to wanna to use a brown crayon, brown paint, brown oil pastel, whichever you choose. And we're gonna, I'm gonna start for the one that kind of starts right here by the tail feather. And it's just gonna be some lines that go up and over. And I'll show you exactly what I mean, okay? Let's see, up and over. And I'm just gonna repeat these lines, but they're gonna, gonna kind of get smaller just like we did with the feathers, okay? And then the other direction, up and over, up and over, up and over, just like that. And then now we wanna add little circles to the end. These are just little extra flourishes that you see a lot of in Mexican folk art, okay? So there's our first set of that little floral design. Um, it looks like in the original, there's some little circles going right down the middle. So I think this is supposed to be some kind of like, fl like floral spray or something like that. All right, so then from there, there's another set coming out from the bottom. We'll do it the same exact way, all right? We're gonna do um, a set of lines that are up and over, up and over, up and over, and then opposite, up and over, up and over, and then little circles on the end. There's our second set of decorative floral spray. You can add some circles down the middle of that as well if you want to, up to you. All right. And then the last one looks like it's kind of coming off over here, but we're gonna do it the same exact way. We're gonna do those lines that go up and over, up and over, up and over little circles on the end, okay? And then you absolutely, again, can do the circles down the middle if you'd like. Okay, so these are just some little decorative add-ons that we're doing. Um, I have, um, let's see, on the original, you can see that a lot of what they, a lot of stuff is just kind of fills in with other little decorative images, like you see the flower right here, you see the hearts, um, you could do something like this, or you could create a border. Uh, that's up to you entirely. I do have um, some examples of some really nice uh, Mexican folk art border ideas, which I will 
post in the comments with, of this video when it's done. So if you want to take a further look at it, but um, you can see it's all very organic and natural. There's like some vines with leaves. This is like kind of a floral border design. Um, this one looks like it's maybe thorns and a vine. Here's another floral one. So here's just some ideas for you for a border for this. I'm just gonna continue to fill mine in though. So let's see, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move on to um, my corners where I have flowers going. Yep, and right here. So I'm still gonna use my brown and I'm gonna make, I'm gonna start with my flower right up here in the corner and I'm gonna do a circle, okay, just like that. And then I'm gonna do the petals right off of it, okay? I'm still using my brown. And, and this does not have to be perfect. That's, a, that's a, a really a nice point that I really wanna emphasize is it doesn't have to be perfect because a lot of folk art is done uh, not by professional artists, right? So this is, it does not have to be perfect. So don't, you don't have to worry too much about it. All right, gonna move on to my other flower, same thing. I'm gonna do a circle in the corner and then I'm gonna do my petals. And remember our petals are just U shapes, if you're, if you're forgetting, right? So we got two flowers and then we're gonna do, down here in this corner, we're gonna do three smaller flowers. So I'm just gonna make one, two, three circles and then we'll color that in later. I think I'm gonna also add another little circle or excuse me a little flower maybe right here as well so I'll add another bigger circle and then um, we're also they, if you look on the original there's also these um, kind of vining plant structures that you see coming out of it and I think I'm gonna do just a couple of those too in case you want to include that in your art then you can do that as well so I'll do one right up top here and how, those are gonna be really easy you're just gonna do a curved line okay curved line and then to do the leaf part you're just going to A curved line and then you're gonna curve it right back almost like a petal just like that okay and then I think that's good enough so I think let's just start finishing coloring in so for um, let's see for those floral kind of sprays that we had I'm gonna use an orange and a white and I'm just gonna color in those circles and you could use any color you want for that but I'm just gonna start coloring in those circles And I might use a little pink to add more color. Maybe I'll outline those circles and color in just to add even more. Okay. And then I might add a little bit of white here and there just to add a little highlight. We really just want to have that color pop off of that brown paper. So lots and lots of color. That's what we want. Um, I think I'll go ahead and I'll take that white and I'll start coloring in the petals of one of my flowers I put in the corner. And then to color in the middle, I think I'll, I think I'll do a, a circle, just like an O shape of some orange. And then I think I might do some blue and then fill it in in the very middle with some pink just to really get some color in there. And I think I'll do the same, maybe different, let's see. For the other corner, I think I'll do my petals in that orange-yellow color, and then I'll color in my middle with a swoop of white, and then just some pink right in the middle. 
just to mix it up a little. Now to color my, my vine shape, I think I'll just take um, my blue and my pink, sounds good, and I'll just color in each one of those sets of leaves, super easy. And I think I'm just gonna go back and forth between the blue and the pink. We'll really quickly go over those other little flourishes that we have. Color those in. see I've added some highlight and some orange and some pink to those little flourishes just to keep building on that color um, let's see what else do we need oh we we got to finish some of our flowers so this is a, this circle is a flower so I think I'm just gonna add some really basic looking white petals and I'm not even gonna have them touch because the simpler it looks the more it looks like uh, traditional Mexican folk art which is what I want so see how I've just done some very, very basic petals. They're not even touching. They're very stylized. That's exactly what I want, right? And then I'll color in the middle. I think I'll do, let's see, a swoop of orange, and then I'll fill in the very middle with some pink. Okay, so there's my um, folk art flower there. And then let's see, this is looking pretty good. I think if you have any other open spaces, you could add anything else that you want. Maybe you want to add little heart shapes or more flowers. This is where you get to get creative with it and make it your own. So I think I will add just a couple of little heart shapes and I think I'll use my brown to draw them on. And these are gonna be very stylized little heart shapes. I'll show you exactly what I mean. There's a couple there. There's one here. All right, just to, just to really help fill in. So if you see down here, it's a very stylized looking heart here, right? And, and then a couple here. And then I'm just simply gonna color them in with colors I already have out. Very simple, color it in. Color it in, let's see. I'll use that yellow. We didn't use a lot of yellow yet. Yellow and a purple. All right, so I got them colored in. And then I think really one more step would just be to take the white and add some highlights. So for example, for the hearts I just made, I'm just gonna do a couple lines on my hearts shapes, just to give the idea of highlight. See, I'm just doing a just a line. Okay, and then on our bird, I think we're gonna add a little bit of highlight too. So on the comb, we're gonna do, and we're gonna outline it with some white. Um, I think on the back of the head, we'll do some, a line of white. Put a little dot of white in the eye. On the front of the body, we're gonna add some white. These highlights are just gonna help bring your picture together and just take it to the next level. So I really encourage you to take the time to add these little extra bits, okay? Add some white here. We're gonna add some white here on this other wing. Um, let's see, I think we're in pretty good shape. So I think we're, I think it's pretty good. Now, if you have a space left on your paper around the edge and you would like to make it look a little bit more like traditional amate bark, you could totally tear it. And I've shown you in the past how to how you just put your hand down and tear. Because the edges of uh, amate folk art painting, um, they're not clean like it would be if you cut it. So see how I just started to tear it? You could absolutely do that too. Otherwise, I think, you know, I might tweak this a little more, but I think this is in really good shape. So I hope you enjoyed doing this. Um, 
our, our version of an Amate bark painting. If you have followed along or if you're going to do this later on maybe today and you want to show us your example, we would absolutely love to see it. Uh, you can tag it, tag us, excuse me, hashtag Studio23 on the go, uh, hashtag Make Arts Virtual. We would love to see and maybe even share what you're working on. And um, otherwise, I will see you, excuse me, Friday with another children's project. Have a great day. We'll see you later. Bye.